everyone. Ashley here from 45 Drives. I'm the Technology Education Manager here, and I'm a new face to these Tech Tip Tuesday videos. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Ceph, an open source clustering software, specifically around the topic of Ceph clustering for small amounts of data. We're really big fans of Ceph here at 45 Drives. We've got a whole playlist about it on our channel. I encourage you to check it out if you're interested in learning more. Ceph has a lot of great advantages, especially if you need high availability, if you're expecting to see data growth in the future, and of course, if you've just got lots of data. If you have any of those, you're the perfect candidate for a Ceph cluster. They have also been the three main use cases that we see here with our customers. But what if you don't have a lot of data? What if the amount of data you have right now is only, say, in the 5 to 20 terabyte range? You might think that clustering really isn't the appropriate solution for you. You might think that you're better off with a single server. Well, I'm here to suggest otherwise, or at least give you something to consider regarding your storage options. You can still get started with clustering, even if you don't have large amounts of data that have traditionally been associated with a clustered solution. Even with smaller amounts of data, clustering can still be a huge benefit and it can cost you less than what you would normally pay from a legacy vendor. Clustering, for those who aren't familiar, is tying together multiple storage servers and linking them together to create a single unit. You're getting that single namespace, you're getting high availability, and even if an entire server goes down, your data is still safe and it's still accessible. With a single server, if something happens with a component inside of it, well, your server is likely going to be offline until it's fixed or patched. Downtime, as we all know, can have a negative impact on your operation. Of course, how much downtime that occurs when this happens means something different for every organization or individual out there. But for many, minimizing the risk of it happening at all is something that needs to be considered. By using clustering for small amounts of data, like five terabytes of usable data, for example, it will provide you enough redundancy to protect against entire servers going down, as long as you apply the correct failure domain. Then there's data security. Ceph gives you amazing data security. This is achieved through either replication or erasure coding. I won't get too technical here, except to say that erasure coding is just like RAID. It's implemented at the hard drive level, but it can also be applied at the server level, the rack level, or at even higher levels. If you want to learn more about RAID, head on over to our website and check out our knowledge base. We've got an article there that breaks it all down. So, thinking about the future and possibly growing your data. Although you might only have a few terabytes right now, what about six months from now? Twelve months from now? You may need more in the future. In a single server, you're limited by the amount of drive slots it has. To avoid the pain of adding a different, standalone storage system, with a Ceph cluster, you can scale easily and really infinitely. It's so easy to grow your data storage infrastructure with a Ceph cluster. With small sets of data, you can literally start out with one or two drives in each unit. Then you can continue to scale out by adding drives to the empty slots. And you can continue to keep adding and adding and adding. By clustering, it just becomes so much easier and it's less of a project for you and your team. It's now an operational expenditure instead of a large planning project, a capital type expenditure. I'll wrap it up by saying that the need to cluster isn't just determined by the amount of data you have, but also whether or not you think it's important to gain the advantages that only clustering can provide to you. If any of the points I've touched upon in this video resonate with you, or if you have any questions, leave us a comment below, or give us a show by email. We will be adding more technical videos about clustering with small data sets in the near future. We're happy to help, and we love talking all things open source. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope it was helpful. We'll be back again next week with something new.